Representative Eric Burleson talks about the David Grush skiff in a whole lot more. It's time for another UFO News Roundup. So get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like, please subscribe, please share on social media, and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Oh, and hat tip to Chumbles for alerting me to this story. I appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, a channel note. I just got a uh, notice from YouTube the other day. I forgot to mention it. Uh, but they told me that Cosmic Road has now reached over a million views. That's right. Cosmic Road, million views. So that is a huge landmark for the channel. And thank you guys for joining me on this crazy journey. I really appreciate it. And, uh, well, let's just get into the news. But, but thank you guys. I appreciate it. All right, so what does Eric Burleson have to say about this skiff with David Grush, or at least the David Grush material? If we can get some specifics, um, some specific information about the what programs that he was was referring to, uh, where the locations of these devices are, where, where the bodies are. Hmm. So I, I just want the very, I want the specifics. Um, now, there is a chance that we might be able to get some of those specifics this Thursday morning. We have, we have another meeting with the Inspector General in a skiff, uh, and I'm told that Grush has signed a release to allow for his, um, his report to the IG to be, to be released. Um, it is uncertain whether they're going to give us the actual copy of the report or let right. us read it in the skiff, or whether they're just going to give us a summary. I'm afraid it's the latter. I'm afraid that they're just going to try to give us a summary, which is not going to be acceptable in my book. I want to see the document. Yeah, me too, man. So I really hope they get the actual documents. I mean, do you trust the Pentagon to give an accurate summary of the David Grush information, complete with the locations of the UFOs in the bodies? Uh, I don't. I really don't. So, uh, so. Fingers crossed that this skiff goes as Eric hopes it will uh, and that they are actually able to get the real David Grush information because only then can this conversation go forward. Burleson goes on to say that he would like to get David in a skiff and that if uh, he can't get David in a skiff or get the Grush information, then he's going to see that there is a red, red flag. He is not a UFO guy. He's not thinking that this is alien technology. He thinks there's possibly other explanations. Um, and he's also not seeing compelling evidence, according to him, that there's actually a cover-up or intentional roadblocks put in, in, uh, in place to prevent him from getting the David Grush information. Uh, so I guess he thinks there's just some, you know, random bureaucratic, you know, uh, issue going on, not necessarily an orchestrated cover-up. So I look forward to his continuing education and evolution on this topic. But, you know, at least he is trying to get answers. And, you know, I really, really salute that. In other news, Thomas Fessler actually covered the dragon UFOs and actually has a screen grab of yours truly on his channel. So I love it. I uh, love the Thomas Fessler show. And it was uh, it tickled me to be on, on his uh, show. Uh, even though he is not, you know, a dragon guy, he's not, he's not aboard the dragon train. Uh, he sees that, you know, there are wings on these objects. And so he's not buying the whole UFO angle to the, these objects. And, you know, my response to that, if Thomas ever watches this would be that, you know, it is pretty verifiable at this point that these objects are going behind distant planes and other vehicles, helicopters and so on. So they are, they are far away from the camera. They are not bugs or birds. Uh, they can also be captured by multiple cameras at the same time. Uh, obviously, it's not a bug going clo close to the lens. Um, other details, you know, that they, they uh, trigger the X-band frequency. So, um, you know, bugs or birds don't do that. So there are some anomalous characteristics to these things that birds or bugs don't have. Um, you know, but... Again, you know, I'm, I'm not asking anybody to, to believe this uh, wholeheartedly, but I do think this is an area of study that really deserves more eyes on it and more research being done on it, because it is hard to debunk uh, some of these 
uh, videos where the objects are going behind planes. And you can clearly see that they are going behind planes. There's, you know, one still uh, frame that I shared of the dragon half behind the wing of the plane. So, uh, yeah, so not a bug or a bird. And that object had wings. It doesn't make any sense. I don't pretend to understand how UFOs work or dragons work. They look like bugs. I'll grant you that. But that one was not a bug. So, man, just, just my thought on that. Oh, and uh, I would love it if Thomas used this uh, screen grab just so that we could have uh, my, my head uh, thumbnailed or, you know, in the corner with his head in the corner and then with my head in the corner. And then I will screen grab that video and then we'll just have, we'll, just, we'll see how far we can go. We'll get this layered effect going into infinity. I love it. Let's make it happen. Okay, on to the next story. Jaime Masson shares this really interesting information, analysis of one of the biological evidence from Nazca by the Japanese scientist, Dr. Uchino Ichino, where it confirms that the eggs within the biological evidence called Edgarda are organic and where inside there are less dense structures that indicate biological material, which confirms that these bodies are genuine. Yeah, because the theory was, you know, about the eggs, there was a debunking idea floated around uh, that they were actually rocks shaped like eggs and placed inside these bodies uh, to, you know, uh, to resemble eggs, but they weren't eggs, as if that made sense somehow. Uh, Mick West uh, thinks, uh, you know, the UFOs are, are raccoons. So, you know, people will grasp at straws to resist, uh, you know, the truth of this. Um and so this new analysis pretty well debunks the stone egg idea. Meanwhile, James Fox and Christopher Mellon exchange thoughts on Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, the lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. Uh, Chris says, to his credit, Kirkpatrick made serious progress in establishing procedures for systematically collecting and analyzing military UAP reports. His scientific background was certainly helpful in dealing with NASA and with many technical issues. I wish him well, and I hope his replacement can improve information sharing with Congress. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry, this cold is still lingering and kicking my butt. It is the it is a persistent cold. I'm not sick, really. I feel fine, but it's just this drainage, man. It's driving me nuts. Driving me nuts. Anyway, what does James Fox have to say about Chris Mullen's uh, take on this? He says, I wouldn't be near as diplomatic as you have been, sir. Dr. Kirkpatrick reminds me of Dr. Condon. I'll leave it right there. And of course, that's from the Condon Report, if you are familiar with uh, UFO programs and, uh, you know, efforts of the past. And of course, I mean debunking brainwashing efforts. And while I applaud Christopher Mellon's uh, diplomacy, I've got to side with James Fox on this. But I think this gentleman says it best. Dave, Dave Grush told me he's going back to D.C. sometime in the next week or so. And I said, uh, Dave, please do something for me. Tell Dr. Kirkpatrick that Dr. Jacobs says, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. And of course, that was former Air Force officer Bob Jacobs, who appeared on the Good Trouble Show, a really great episode. And uh, I really need to make a full video uh, on that account. Of course, many of you will be familiar with Bob Jacobs' story and uh, the UFO that shot down the, the missile that was the uh, test missile for a, an ICBM um, and how that was covered up. But you may not be familiar with uh, that he actually approached Arrow and gave this information to them and the lovely Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick and what have they done with it, right? So he is not very happy with Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. Meanwhile, is Peru going to have its own UFO hearing or at least a hearing devoted to studying the Nazca mummies? Wouldn't that be amazing? I don't know if we're going to get that, but Ronnie Vernet says congressmen for, from Peru were present at the last session in Mexico Congress, uh, opening the roads to a first UAP hearing on that country to happen soon. Wouldn't that be amazing if the people were, were the mummies, you know, the, 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 the people from the region where the mummies came from actually investigated those mummies 
not as relics, uh, cultural relics or dolls, but as beings, because it was their ancestors likely that were interacting with these living beings. So it's only right that they should bring us this information. So I hope that happens. Fingers crossed. Meanwhile, we've got a new UFO video posted by Chris Bledsoe, one of my favorite experiencers. I've actually reached out to him to see if he would be interested in an interview, but I haven't heard back from him yet. Uh, but check out that beautiful violet orb or whatever you want to call that. Wow, that is so cool. That is so cool. And if you've seen the episode of uh, Beyond Skinwalker Ranch, oh, look at that. That's cool. A little, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what that was. But, uh, but yeah, they, they actually hooked this device up to his head to measure what his brain is doing uh, when he is in contact with these objects or with the beings in them, maybe. Um, and there's actually uh, some really unusual brain activity that occurs when he's making these objects, including the communication centers of his brain, not the giving communication, but the receiving. They are sending him messages in communication, letting him know when they are coming. Um, so just amazing, uh, an amazing story. Love Chris. Hope I can get him on the show. Last but not least, a story sent to me by Tim Clark. So hat tip, Tim. I appreciate it. Check this out, moon-sized UFO on Earth's sun, one years of proof, UFO sighting news. Now, I'm not vouching for this information, but it's certainly intriguing. And as I've reported on several times on this channel, uh, the UFOs seem to come and go from the sun. And there is even some evidence to suggest that they use the stars as gateways hopping from solar system to solar system, but also potentially gateways to beyond this dimension. So interesting stuff. But yeah, here is the giant black triangle on the sun. Check it out. Hey, guy. Yeah, okay. There's, there's music playing, so I can't let you hear what he has to say. But here is the object uh, captured on the sun or orbiting the sun or drawing energy from the sun, whatever it is doing, uh, and it is calculated to be uh, the size of the moon. That is nuts. I mean, I've heard of giant UFOs, but uh, if that's true, uh, that eats the cake on that one. So let me know what you think about the moon-sized giant UFO orbiting the sun and all the other news items today. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure'd appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of future videos. You don't want to miss a thing. Join me on social media. There's Facebook and Twitter links below. Love to see you guys there. If you wanted to support Cosmic Road in an even bigger way, please consider grabbing a coffee mug or a t-shirt. See the merch store below or becoming a channel member because channel members are rock stars. And I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you. Meanwhile, there's plenty of other videos to check out on the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.